Okay, today we are going to be changing piston cups on this concrete pump. What you're seeing is a view of the flush box. So you can see we've already drained the flush box and we've cleaned it out. Here's a sample of some of the material that we uh, drained out of the flush box. This is a definite indication that your piston cups are worn out. And you see lots of sand. Anything bigger than sand is, is too big. It's normal to pass the very fine cementaceous material, but once you start seeing clumps of this, your piston cups are worn out. Okay, now after you've drained the flush box, your, your next step would be to cycle the machine to the end of the stroke because we need to disconnect the coupler. So in order to take the machine or the cylinders to the end of the stroke, I need to use the test switches that are provided on the panel. All of the reed machines have test switches that will allow the cylinders to come to the maximum stroke and deadhead. Sometimes there's a couple of switches involved, sometimes there's only one depending on the model. So what we're going to do is start the machine and honk the horn because I cannot run this machine unless I honk the horn first of all to energize the circuit. The way I stroke the cylinders is I'm going to choose either cylinder A or cylinder B. In this case I need to retract cylinder A so I want to extend the B side. So while I hold the bond switch to activate the cylinders once I come to the end of the stroke, I will simply shut the switch off and we are where we need to be. Now I forgot to mention, anytime you're doing this type of work, you want the machine to cycle very, very slowly. So I'm going to set my speed control here so that the cylinders will cycle slow and I'm in control. Depending on the model, your flow control could be anywhere. It might be a valve or it might be an electric switch like we have here. Here we go. And there we have our coupler. needs to be removed. Now in order to access the coupler, I need to remove our proximity switch bar. All the reed models will have bolts on either end of the bar so you can remove just the bar. What you don't want to do is make an adjustment from front to back. These proximity sensors are located a specific distance from the flush box. So you don't want to mess or change that distance. All we're going to do is remove the bar. There's the two bolts. Now we can set the bar outside of the flush box. Now we have plenty of room to access our coupler. These bolts are very tight, so I need a cheater bar here to assist me. This coupler is called a split coupler. It's two halves. So while I remove my last bolt, I'm going to support it from the bottom. That way the coupler cannot drop and chip my chrome on my concrete cylinder.
depending on the type of machine you have, you may have a little more or a little, ac a little less access to this box. Here's my bottom coupler. Now what you're seeing here is the end of the concrete piston. It's a multiple piece piston and we need to pry that out of the flush box. So I'm going to get my pry bar. You want to hook it right here on the end of the cylinder and gently pry it out. There's our concrete piston. Okay, now we want to remove this piston assembly so we can disassemble it at the workbench. Okay, now we're at our workbench. Here's our piston assembly. Before I chuck it up into the vise, I'm just going to wipe off some of the muck. Try to keep my vise clean. Now when I chuck it up in the vise, do not chuck it up here. You want to chuck up on the bigger portion of the body here because it's very important that this piece stays in good machine condition. This is the piston cup here, the orange portion. This is the guide band on the bottom. Earlier versions used an o-ring, not a guide band. Now you can see there's an awful lot of wear, there's a lot of material embedded if you want to take a close-up. Now the first thing we need to do to disassemble this piston is remove the four bolts buried under the concrete. So first of all, I need to shift the concrete out. You can use a hammer and a chisel or an air gun. Now be careful because you have a steel plate under here. If you put a lot of dings on it with your chisel, it will just give concrete more chance to stick to it. So I try to come at an angle. Now that we've cleaned off this buildup on the concrete piston, now we can access our bolts. Uh, you want to avoid this kind of buildup on your machine. It can actually get so big that it will prevent fresh mud from lubricating your concrete piston once you burn it. So make sure that you get that clean every day after pumping. piston and piston plate. This side of here is called the concrete piston adapter. Now to disassemble that, sometimes you can find the groove because it is a split ring. Actually, no, I didn't find it. I made my own. We're not going to reuse these parts. Build up on it. During our cleaning process, we want to check a few things. We need to make sure this groove is nice and clean. Of course, you want to clean off all of this concrete. It's also a good idea to run a tap through your holes. This is a 3 8 fine thread. Okay, now we're going to start cleaning the piston. A nice stiff putty knife usually does real well here. Good idea to wear safety glasses. Concrete in the eye hurts. That's a nice 
clean surface now. Now I'll do the same thing on my square edges. Depending how well the, uh, and how often the flush box was maintained and the oil was changed, that'll determine how long it'll take you to clean this up. Also, guys that run uh, flush box oil rather than water, typically that'll aid in cleanup also. Okay, now that I've got all of the big stuff out of the way, I'm going to take this to my wire wheel just to add the finishing touches, clean it up nice and good. You can use a die grinder with the wire wheel, even a wire brush. Now our concrete piston is looking like new again. I want to make sure that you don't have any sharp edges or burrs. I actually made one myself with my screwdriver, punching out the guide band, so I'm going to file that out. If your machine uses the O-ring design, I want to make sure that you don't have any sharp edges on the sides that will cut your new O-ring. We're also going to retap our holes here. Make sure there's no concrete in them. Okay, now that all my holes have been tapped and cleaned, my coupler area is also nice and clean. We can go ahead and put our guide band on. Simply snaps into place like that. We'll set our piston aside. Now we'll take the opportunity to clean our piston plate. As you can see, the piston plate has a lot of access to the concrete. You have a chamfered edge here, but you really want to make sure you get clean. So you chip off all the concrete. chisel or a scraper for this works good. Even a ball peen hammer. Now we can uh, clean the bottom face. Now that we've cleaned the bottom surface, not clean enough yet to install, but we want to check it with a flat edge. It's very important that this piston plate remain perfectly flat. So get out a trusty straight edge and check for flatness. This piston is very low in the center, this piston plate, very low in the center. So I'm going to replace this one. But it, typically you can reuse yours. So once you get this nice and clean, you even want to do it on a wire wheel. You also want to clean out your bolt holes. Just use a nice big screwdriver. Get your bolts from either either way. This will dig all the concrete out of your holes. We're back at the machine now. We're getting ready to install the piston adapter with the guide band. Now, first of all, we need to clean a few things, starting with our coupler. This flush box was well maintained, so my cleanup will be easy enough to do with a rag. Sometimes if you have lots of rust, you want to polish these up. Very important that they stay clean. Okay, now another important note on these couplers. They are uh, machined, bolted together, so it's best that you keep them 
attached to one another the way they were machined. These couplers have stamps. They'll either be stamped on the very end. In this case, I have a number two stamped on the top. So there's my top coupler. Here's my bottom with a number two. Now when you go to install the coupler, just make sure that you have these stamps facing the same way. Personally, I like to face them towards the hopper. Okay, now we need to also clean the flush box, which I've already done. And something that's often overlooked, you always want to feel inside your chrome cylinder. I feel a lot of buildup in this area. Now, it's somewhat abrasive, so if I just install a new piston right now, I will uh, shorten its life because it's going to be rubbing back and forth over this abrasive surface. So, I'm going to get my scraper, just scrape that stuff out. Now we've got the cylinder nice and clean. I don't feel any buildup or uh, caked up sediment of any type. Nice and smooth. Now we can grease the cylinder. It's made an installation. Apply some grease to the guide band or O-ring, depending what model you have. Now the guide band design, you must insert the piston adapter, you know, squarely into the cylinder. It's too wide to push it in sideways and then roll it over once it's inside the cylinder. For example, on the O-ring design, I will put them in at about this angle, feed it into the cylinder, <clears throat> then I put half of one of my couplers on and just snap it down. I use it as leverage and snap it down onto our rod. But the guide band must go in square. This one fits really nice. Sometimes if they fit really tight, you can even use your test switches and hydraulically push it into the concrete cylinder. Now I'll take my top half coupler, make sure my number two or whatever stamp you have is towards the hopper. Again, it doesn't matter if it's towards the hopper or towards the tow hitch, as long as they're together. Snapped into place. Now I take my other coupler with number two facing the hopper, slide it in place, get one of my bolts started. Get the second bolt started while I'm supporting it from the bottom. Okay. Now we tighten the coupler bolts. These need to be nice and tight. Sometimes you might even want to use a 